John, I like applying the uh, principles and framework of philosophy of biology to very specific areas in mm -hmm. biology and, and, and in biology's extension. Um, and two areas that are uh, presently uh, on the horizon, indeed uh, are current, are concepts of transhumanism, artificial intelligence, uh, is, will all artificial intelligence become conscious? How will it affect mm -hmm. transhumanism? What it means to be human? When does the species change? Or, mm -hmm. you know, so these are real um, uh, concepts that come from evolutionary biology. Mm -hmm. So how do you apply your way of thinking of evolutionary biology to transhumanism or artificial intelligence? Well, let me, let me start with a very specific aspect of transhumanism, which is the idea of life, um, lifespan extension, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is, is a nice place to apply the um, process ontology that I take to be central to, um, to um, the philosophy of biology. So, so one of the central theses of um, a process biology is that we should think of uh, the organism as a life cycle rather than as a particular stage. We tend to think of a, you know, an elephant as a great big grown-up thing. We don't tend to think of the elephant embryo, but of course it is a cycle. It passes through all of these. C.H. Waddington, who was a distinguished 20th century biologist who in fact was a process thinker. He was greatly influenced by Alfred North Whitehead, um, the kind of doyen of, of um, mm -hmm. process philosophers, um, has a lovely distinction between homeostatic processes and homeoretic processes. Mm. So homeostatic processes are the very familiar kind of processes that maintain uh, a state and very important in biology. So you know, we're familiar with, you know, kind of thermoregulation and, and all kinds of, of, of aspects of metabolism that maintain us functioning. Homeoresis, as opposed to homeostasis, is the tendency of a system, a process, to follow a particular pathway. And Waddington thought a lot about this, and he has some very famous pictures of a ball rolling down a mm -hmm. hill with mm -hmm. possible branches that um, many people will have seen. Um, and this is a model of um, a process that has a tendency to go a certain way, but also has the possibility of being diverted in different ways. Um, I think that, that, that something, the, the whole discourse around lifespan extension is based on not, not this kind of homeoretic process with a particular trajectory, but the idea that we are a kind of machine that can be fixed in certain ways, that certain things go wrong with. So there is a steady state, there's a terminal state. Essentially, the life cycle is we develop, we reach the terminal state, we stay in that terminal state, and then we start to fall apart. So look at the ways we fall apart, try and counteract them, and we'll carry on in this steady state forever. From a process point of view, there is no steady state. There is the process of going through all the different stages of the life cycle. So, um, so I, think, I think it's bad metaphysics makes us think that we could live to be a thousand. I mean, of course, I'm not saying there is not some possible way of changing the process so dramatically that we uh, went through a completely different life cycle. I mean, that could happen. We could evolve to have very long life cycles. But the notion that, that we can just somehow fix um, aging, which is a kind of malfunction of the machine, is metaphysically just misguided. Mm. And of course, you know, this, this ties in naturally with all the questions people ask about it. Well, so exactly how does this work? Do we stay age 35 for <laughs> a thousand years and then fall apart? Mm. Or do we, you know, uh, do we take... 200 years to grow up and then, <laughs> and then sort of mm -hmm. just slow everything down. And, and which of these do we actually want? So I, I don't doubt that there's a possibility that in a sufficiently medically resourced society, we might all live to be 110, you know, because people do live to be 110 and 
We could probably do a little bit of genetic modification and get these lovely genes that a few people have that seem to make them live very healthily to 100. Um, but, but this is kind of within the, the envelope of this process that we, um, we currently characterize as our species. Of course, a plastic variable process, but not one in which living to be 500, let alone 1,000, mm -hmm. is even part of the mm -hmm. variable possibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a very unthought out um, mm -hmm. view in the sense that it's at least that it's based on what I would think to be a quite misguided mechanistic metaphysics.